Hang on a minute, please. What's going on in there anyway, Tapa? Mmm, what's all this? Oh, I was trying on my formal. You know, tonight's the annual policeman's ball. Oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, the long arm of the law going to shake a leg tonight. You know, George, I certainly am sorry I have to wear this dress again this year. No, yeah, what's the matter with it, honey? It look good. Why, George, it's old. It's out of style. Just look at the skirt, how short it is. They're wearing them almost down to their ankles. I wish to heaven you could afford to buy me a new one. Now look, honey, you know that's the last thing in the world that I can afford to buy. You know the money I owe all over town. People are closing in on me and everything. Yes, I might as well forget about a new dress. If anybody needs a new outfit around here, it's me. Have you took a look at my tuxedo here lately? How green it is? Look like it made with chlorophyll. Forget the dress, George. Okay, okay. And incidentally, I got a few things to do. And while I'm out, I'm going to stop by the lodge. Well, don't forget we have to leave at 8 o'clock. Don't worry, honey. I'll be home in time to dress. And I hope that they use a green spotlight tonight so I don't stand out. Pick you up at 8 o'clock tonight for the dance. Bye. Bye, Indian. Oh, hi, Kingfish. All set for the policeman's ball tonight? It's gonna be a big thing, Kingfish. They're gonna have a 12-piece orchestra to hear. So what? With all them flat beats clomping around out there, who's gonna hear it? What's the matter, Kingfish? You seem kind of down. Well, the same thing, Amy. Money. Half hour, she's been bothering me about a new dress. All the store keepers are asking me for money. I tell you, son, I got my back to the wall. Oh, yeah, huh? Say, hey, Andy, you wouldn't want to buy my car, would you? Four hundred dollars? No, Kingfish, I don't need no car. Especially yours with that crazy maroon car and that big white stripe all around it. Well, I gotta be running along, Kingfish. Uh, you going home? No, not at the moment, Andy. I a little tuck it out. I think I'll get me a little rest here. Okay, well, see you later. Well, so long, Amy. We'll set this thing for 7 o'clock. That'll give me plenty of time. Kingfish? 
I wish I knew. Last night, I left my car right here in front of the lodge hole. Now it's over across the street. That's a mysterious thing. Well, maybe somebody used it. Well, guess I'll get on home. And Kingfish, if he get to waving his finger in 
front of your face like this. Only his thing is going to be twice as long as mine. He'll have you confessing to everything, from the shooting of Dan McGrew to the killing of Cock Robin. Calhoun, what am I going to do? Well, now, let me see. The king now, you if the king find the car, and if I was you, I'd dispose of it. Dispose of it to somebody. Yeah, dispose of it. Calhoun, huh? I think I know the disposal unit I'm gonna use. Mm, yeah. All right, Andy. Now, come here, son. Come, I want to show you here. Wait a minute, Kingfish. I got that message up at my place for me to meet you here. What you want to see me about? Well, now, I'll tell you, Andy, old pal. Hold it, Kingfish, hold it. Whatever it is, I don't want to hear it. Why, what's the matter? I don't want to hear nothing that starts out with Andy, old pal. I can't never vote it. Oh, no, no, Andy. I had you come over here because I want to do you a favor. What's that? Well, Andy, this car here of mine that I wanted to sell you last week. Look, Kingfish, the answer is still the same. I ain't paying $400 for that junk heat. Now look, Andy. Now look, Andy, forget the $400 price. I done saved it a little. And if you act right quick, you can have the car for $2. $2? Well, I don't know, King. Look, Andy, would you take the car if I give you $2? Well, well tell you the truth, King B. I don't need no car like that. Would you take the car if I give you the $400? Oh, King B, the thing is beginning to sound silly. <laughs> That car might be all right, but if I was going to... Well, come here, Andy. I'll... Yeah, but, but look, Kingfish. The thing I can't understand is why are you so anxious to get rid of this car all of a sudden? Well, Andy, I can see that you hadn't heard about the economic conditions of the country. What do you mean by that? Well, you know, last year in the automobile business, how it went from a seller's market to a buyer's market. Yeah, I hear something about that. Well, yesterday it took a turn for the worse. It's now what they call the giver's market. Yeah, well, Kingfish, I know you're just kidding about the $400. <laughs> uh, but is you serious about wanting to give me this car for nothing? That's right, Andy. I know when I licked, you really got me over the bar. You really sensed the trend of the time, didn't you? I did? <laughs> Still trying to play dumb, huh? You just slicky, all right. But, Andy, I know when I beat. And I got the contract all made out here. Mm -hmm. See, I done signed my name there already where it says... Victim. Oh, yeah, I guess I'll slick all right. <laughs> yeah, just put your John Hancock there, Andy. Say, Kingfish, uh, seeing you, you done did the thing three days ago. Well, yeah, Andy, I had to make the thing out retroactive. You see, I ain't worked in the past two days, so that makes the last third day my last uh, legal business day. Oh, Go ahead and sign the thing, Andy. Yeah. Congratulations, Andy. You are now a full-fledged retro attic car owner with no kickback. Yeah, you know, King for a while there, I thought you were trying to jip me, but uh, like you say, I guess I'm too smart for you. <laughs> oh, hi, Emma. Uh, hello, fella. Uh, Lady told me I might find you here. Uh, uh, say, King Peach, that certainly was a terrible thing about your car here being used in that hold-up last night. What? A uh, tough break about your car here, Andy. But if you need me in your trouble, just call me. See you later, boys. Now, wait a minute here, Andy. Take it easy. Start talking, Kingfish. Uh, now, wait a minute, fellas. What's going on here? I don't know, Amos. I just signed a radioactive contract for the car here. <laughs> my John Hamhock on it and everything. <laughs> Jumping the car on Andy ain't gonna get you off the hook. Because you owned the car when the robbery was done. Amos, I didn't have nothing to do with the robbery. Well, I'm sure you didn't, Kingfish. And that's the reason why I can't understand why you don't go down to the police and tell them just what happened. You mean go to the police station with my own free will and violation? So you was going to try and pin the rap on me, huh? And maybe I'd get 20 years in jail or something. Well, you was getting a car for nothing. <laughs> right in. Uh, what you do about the thing ain't none of my business. 
But with every cop in town looking for this car, I'd go down to the police and get this thing straightened out if I was you. That's all I can tell you. <laughs> Dad Amos, go to the police. He always want to do everything in a roundabout way. <laughs> Kingfish, give me back that contract. Andy, what is I going to do? It ain't going to take the police long to find a maroon car like this with that big stripe around it. Because yours is the only one in town. Oh, if it only wasn't. But look, Andy, I think you give me an idea there. Why not paint the car and that'll throw them over the trail? Paint the car? Yeah, that's the only thing to do, Andy. I'll go up to my apartment and get the vacuum cleaner that's got a paint spray attachment to it. I'll go get it. Wait right here, Andy. Okay. Hey, better take another look. I don't know, Andy, but there's something different about you. I just can't put my finger on it. Well, these are the same clothes I always wear. Andy, how long you been wearing a white derby? <laughs> Well, the first chance I get, I'll spray it brown for you. Come on, let's get this other stuff out of the way. <laughs> well, Andy, we done a good day's work here today. Yeah. Yeah, now I can really breathe easier. Well, they'll never be able to trace me now. <laughs> well, how do you do there? Say, what is that? Something new? A white derby? Uh, yeah, this is the new style this year. I see. Say, that's a fine paint job you got there. Is that a new one? Oh, no, no. Uh, that's the original paint job come with the car. That's the 1939 model. You mean that's the original paint job? Uh, uh yeah, that's right. You know, they much did a much better job in those days. Yeah. They really made cars that could stand up. Believe me, you don't find paint jobs like this on the cars they put out today. Look at that. Still smooth. Just as if it was done yesterday. <laughs> well, they use uh, slow drying paint in them days. <laughs> Maroon. They were looking for a maroon car. With a big white stripe. I think I'll take you boys down to the station house. Oh, you can't do this to me. I'm innocent. You can't put me in jail. I'm innocent, I tell you. I is innocent. I'm innocent, I tell you. I didn't do it. I'm innocent. Mr. Stevens, we're here to determine the true facts in this case. So will you please keep quiet so we can continue? Yes, sir. Mr. Brown, one of the things I can't understand at this point is how you happen to get involved in all this, with the car and everything. Well, Your Honor, I just wanted to help the kingfish here. You mean in connection with the robbery? No, no, Your Honor. He pulled the robbery by himself. <laughs> I don't know nothing about the robbery. That's all for now, Mr. Brown. Yes, sir. Mr. Stevens. According to the arresting officer's report, you claim you were asleep in the lodge hall during the time of the robbery. That's right, Your Honor. 
Oh, Mrs. Stevens. Yes, Your Honor. Now, Mrs. Stevens, you say that you went to the dance without your husband? That's right, Your Honor. And I telephoned the lodge hall several times during the evening, but I didn't get any answer. Your Honor, I object. Our wife can't testify against her husband. Shut up. Yes, ma'am. On the other hand, Your Honor, Mr. Stevens is quite a sound sleeper, and he could have slept through the telephone ringing. Your Honor, as Mr. Stevens' wife, I, of all people, know that he is not perfect. And I certainly can't excuse his actions in this case. But I can assure you that he is not a thief. Thank you, Mrs. Stevens. Well, there seems to be an additional fact here that might have some bearing on this case. It is commonly known, Stevens, that you have been very desperate for money in recent weeks. Well, uh, I admit I've been a little strapped. Just what is your business, Mr. Stevens? Well, I is, uh, well, you might say I is a financial manipulator. A financial manipulator? Uh, excuse me, Your Honor, but he's telling the truth. Uh, he's been nipping my finances for years. <laughs> you step up, please, Mr. Jones. Uh, yes, sir, Your Honor. Amos, we've all known you around town for a long time, and you're one of our prized citizens. What do you know about all this? Uh, well, Your Honor, uh, the Kingfish here has been a friend of mine for a long time. And, well, we all know that he promotes a few little deals now and then. Your Honor, I object that there are villains and a uh, different kind of chipping. <laughs> but uh, what I started out to say is, Your Honor, that the Kingfish would never pull a robbery or nothing like that. I'd stake my life on that. Thank you, Amos. Well, I'm inclined to agree with Amos. After listening to all the facts in this case, I really don't think you're the criminal type. And I feel that this is all an unfortunate misunderstanding, which... Wait a minute, Your Honor, wait a minute. Hold everything. Just a minute, Your Honor. Your Honor, with the permission of the court, I, Al Gonquin J. Calhoun, would like to throw a bombshell in this case, here. Yeah? I intend to prove to the satisfaction of everybody that Mr. Stevens here was not in the large hall sleep during the robbery, but was with me in my room playing gin rum till five o'clock in the morning. Mr. Stevens doesn't seem to recall that. Mr. Calhoun, do you know the meaning of the word perjury? Perjury? Do you know that you can go to the penitentiary for deliberately lying to protect a friend? Kill. And do you realize that giving false testimony is a criminal offense? What have you to say about that? Your Honor, how would I go about turning state's evidence? Come on, Mr. Calhoun. Yes, sir. Stevens, I think in view of this conflicting testimony here, instead of dismissing this case, we're going to have to go into it a little deeper. Now, wait a minute, Your Honor. I don't know nothing about his testimony. Excuse me, Your Honor. Yes, Johnson. May I speak to you a moment? It's very important. Certainly. Well, folks, that settles this case. What do you mean, Your Honor? I tell you, I didn't do it. I know you didn't, Stevens. We just picked up the thief who committed the robbery when he was trying to pawn some of the jewelry. He confessed to the whole thing. He admitted using your car in the robbery. You mean, I is free? I can go? That's right. Oh, thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Congratulations, King Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm so happy this is over with. Now, let's get out of here. Oh, now, my darling, ain't it wonderful? You're a very lucky man, George Stevens. But it just so happens you wouldn't have been in any trouble like this if you'd lead a normal life like other men. Work in the day and sleep at night when you're supposed to. Now, wait a minute, yeah. I mean it. And to make sure that nothing like this gets a chance to happen again, tomorrow morning at 7 o'clock, you're going to get a job. But I... And I'm not foolish. Job. <laughs> Your Honor, could I ask a favor of the court? What's that, Stevens? Would you mind slapping me in jail until this whole thing blew over? <laughs>
Ladies and gentlemen, this is Amos. I just want to tell you about something that happened to my friends Andy and the Kingfish. Andy found a nickel in an old trunk. It was dated 1877. So Andy wrote a letter to Mr. Wilton, a rare coin dealer, and right now Mr. Wilton is answering Andy's letter. Andrew H. Brown, care of the Mystic Knights of the Sea Lodge Hall. Dear Mr. Brown, in reply to your recent letter requesting the value of an 1877 five cent piece, the current market of this coin is $250. If you care to bring the coin in, we will be happy to pay you this amount. I hope our offer meets with your approval. Yours very truly. Is that all, Mr. Wilson? Yes. And I hope this Andrew Brown accepts our offer. I'd like to add this coin to our collection. Uh, get the letter right off. Yes, sir. Good morning, Kingfish. Well, good morning, Joe. How am I old pal the mailman this morning? Any mail? Just one letter, Kingfish. It's for Andy Brown. I'll see the boy later at the pool hole. I'll give it to him. Well, I guess I better be getting home now and see if the battle axe got any lunch for me. See you later, old pal. <laughs> that you, George? Yes, yeah, if I just me. Lunch ready? I just come from. <laughs> Honey, thought I told you not to come out in that rig till I got something in my stomach. You just keep your big mouth shut. What's that letter you got there? A letter for Andy, from a rare coin dealer. Hmm, maybe I better open that letter and see what they're writing the boy about. George Stevens, you ain't thinking about tampering with the mails, is you? Now, wait a minute. Let's think of this thing. You know I pay taxes. It's my government. What about? Well, if it's my government, it's my post office. And if it's my post office, <laughs> Ain't no harm in a fellow opening his own mail, is it? <laughs> uh, Mr. Andy Brown. 1877. Holy mackerel. Andy has got a nickel worth $250. George Stevens, it was bad enough opening Andy's letter. You ain't thinking about jipping him out of that coin, is you? Who? Me? Innocent Stevens? <laughs> I'll say I is. Well, you just better not, because I ain't gonna stand for no more trouble around here. You understand that? And if you start jipping Andy or anybody else, I'm gonna break every bone in your body. Well, Henry Van Poda. Hello, Kingfish. Uh, have a seat, Henry. Charming to see you, simply charming. Yeah, it is charming. I dropped Mrs. Van Porter at the beauty parlor and came right over as soon as I could. Now, uh, what's this I hear about Andy having a nickel worth $250? That's right, Henry. I accidentally found out about it. Now all I gotta do is figure out a way to get it away from him. Well, knowing you, Kingfish, <laughs> that should be a minor operation. I know the boy got the nickel on him someplace, but how I gonna get his pants off so I can go through his pockets? Well, let me see. A man takes his pants off when he uh, goes to sleep, or uh, when he goes to the doctor. Wait a minute, doctor. That's it, Henry. Doctor. See. I got a lot of doctor equipment that I got when the drugstore up the street burned down. Yeah, Dr. George Stevens. Henry, I think I was about to preform a nickelectomy. <laughs> King Fish, I've been expecting a letter that was supposed to, uh, 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 uh excuse me, Andy, can't you see I've taken a blood count here? <laughs> Track two. Hmm. That's the most anemic blood I ever did see. <laughs> well, Andy, old pal, it's good seeing you. Uh, excuse the rubber glove. I just come from a big operation. Kingfish, huh? you mean to say that you is an actual doctor? Well, I ain't been blabbing it around, but I've been taking a correspondence course in doctoring from that big uh, medical school down there in uh, uh, Baltimore, John Vanville. Oh, I don't hear about that place, yeah. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, what's the matter? Well, wait a minute, yeah. Mm-hmm. 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 Kingfish, is you uh-hooing good or uh-hooing bad? Well, in between. Uh, better take another look here. Mm. I see you are suffering from a slight inflagration of the optimistic nerve there. Oh, me. Now, I don't want to worry you or frighten you or nothing like that. But if you got any reading to do, you better do it within the next two weeks. Two weeks? <laughs> hey, you, doctor, what must I do? Well, I can't tell until I look into it a little deeper. Uh, deeper? How deep has you got to look? Uh, pretty deep. Uh, take off your pants. <laughs> Wait a minute, Kingfish. If this trouble's with my eyes, how come I got to take my pants off? That's a secret of obstricity. So don't argue with the obstricital. Yeah, put that on. And hurry up, too, because I got a full schedule of doctor in here. So I think I'm going to have to squeeze you in between an appendicitis and a uh, loose liver. <laughs> Is you done locate the trouble with my eyes yet, Kingfish? <laughs> it ain't in your adenoids. Uh, turn around. Well, uh, better take a look in this air here. Sure is dark in there. Wait a minute till I get my flashlight here. Andy. You hold this there while I run around looking the other side. <laughs> Any light coming through all right? Ah, good, good. Yeah, well, Andy, I see the trouble now. It's with your eyes, all right. What you mean with my eyes? Well, after giving you thorough examination, I find that the root of your trouble is eye strain. Yeah, my boy, you done strained your eyes. Yeah. I know I ain't been seen the way I oughta. You ought to see some of the gals I've been whistling at lately. And I prescribe that you give your eyes complete rest. Yeah, you gotta rest them at least an hour each day. Yeah, but ain't it kind of hard to rest your eyes without resting the rest of you? No, son, uh, medical science done find out a way to overcome that. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. You got to shut out the light completely. Yeah, you got to shut out all the light. <laughs> all the light. Don't want you to see nothing. <laughs> now sit down. Uh, oh, not there, Andy, not there. Here's the chair over here. Now you sit right here. On, sit down there on the chair now. Just sit, just sit down. Yeah, yeah. Everything gonna be all right now. Just... Uh, can you see anything? I can't see nothing. Fine. Say, Kingfish, where is you? I was scared. Now, 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 wait a minute, now, now sit down, will you, Andy? Sit down, now, sit down there, now. Now, just sit there and relax. Everything gonna be all right. Kingfish, hold my hand. Hold your hand? Yeah, hold my hand. If you don't hold my hand this second, I'm gonna take this bandage right off. No, no, don't, 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 don't do that. No, now, don't do that. Uh, here on my hand, now, just hang right on to it there. Hang right on to it. <laughs> ah, that's better. Mm. Well, I'm sure it's cold. Uh, that's because I've been having chills here lately. Kingfish, I know you is here, but it sounds like your voice is coming to the other side of the room. It just sounds like that way, Andy. It's acoustic. I stand right here alongside you. Oh, good boy. Good boy. <laughs> you know, Kingfish, you was a real pal to stay so close to me when I was scared like this. Yeah, you sure is. <laughs> Mister, where are your telephone? Right back there. I uh, thank you. Mr. 
Mr. Wilton. Look, I got that letter about the 1877 nickel. Yeah. And I got the nickel right here in my pocket. And, uh... I done dropped a rare nickel in the telephone. Say, Kingfish, for the last half hour, you've been awful quiet. You ain't dead, is you? <laughs> Kingfish, why is the rest of you? Andy, what is you doing with that crazy thing in your hand? Amos, 30 minutes ago, the kingfish was on the other end of that thing. Yeah? Well, what is your pants doing down on the floor over there with the pockets inside out? Amos, my nickel. Wait a minute. This whole thing is a trick of the kingfish. He done got away with my rare nickel. Well, what you gonna do now, Andy? Amos, I'm gonna find that kingfish, and I'm gonna beat him to a pub. <laughs> And then I'm gonna beat up on the pub. <laughs> yeah, and now that you explain it that way, Kingfish, I realize that you is my pal. <laughs> oh, yeah, Andy. I done it all for you. I only took the nickel so you wouldn't lose it. And I even made a deal for you to get $250. And the best part of the deal is, I only gonna take half the money. And I even count on taking the smallest half. <laughs> <laughs> Kingfish, I don't know how to thank you. Uh, but tell me this. Where is the nickel now? Is you got it in a safe place? Well, yes and no. Uh, how come that no messed up in there? <laughs> well, Andy, old pal, the nickel is in the telephone coin box down in the middle of the drugstore. Well, whoa! Slow down, slow down. Something just kind of whizzed by me there, Kingfish. <laughs> It seems to me, uh, I heard you say something about the uh, telephone coin box. Well, it ain't nothing to get excited about. The nickel is in the telephone coin box down the middle of the drugstore. Kingfish, I'm going to bust now, you now, right in the nose. Now, now, take it easy. Calm down, calm down. We ain't going to get nowhere fighting with each other. The reporting thing to do now is figure out a way to get it out. Yeah, I guess that's the thing to do, all right. Now, when could you go down there and pry the box off the wall? Oh, I could go down there and pry that box off the wall. Uh, I could uh, hold it, hold it. What you mean is when could I do it? Well, you is the illogical one to do the job. Being the owner of the coin, you has got prior rights. I oh, is, huh? Yeah, so having prior rights, it's up to you to do the pry. You know, Kingfish, for the first time today, you is beginning to talk sense. <laughs> Come on, let's go down. Good afternoon. Hi. Hello. <laughs> well, here we is, Andy Old Pal. Kingfish. Is you sure that we won't get in no trouble messing with that phone box? Of course not, Andy. You was only getting your own nickel back. You has got legal juice spoons. I is, huh? Yeah, now you get in there, and I'll take a dangerous part. I'll stand guard out here. That's what I'm going to do. Ah, Kingfish, you is a pal. <laughs> Hello, Kingfish.
Ouch! Don't make so much noise. Change this for me. I want to use the phone. Sure. Are you on duty today, Roy? I'll know in a few minutes. I have to call the desk sergeant down to the 32nd precinct. Oh. How are you coming in there, Andy? Have it for you in a minute, Kingfish. Is uh, someone using the phone? Oh, it being used all right. A friend of mine used it. Yeah, well, uh, will your friend be long? I got to call headquarters. Thing you say you got a call? Headquarters. Oh, you mean uh, Republicans or Democrat headquarters? Is you a politician or something like that? Police headquarters. I'm a plain clothes. <laughs> Certainly is a noisy diet on that phone in there. <laughs> hey, Kingfish, give me a hacksaw. I can't get the money if I told you. What's that you see, stranger? Hey, what's going on in there? Trying to rob the coin box? I've never seen the man before in my life. <laughs> hey, hold on a minute, you. And you, come on out here. You're both under arrest. Hey, mister, you can't arrest me. Kingfish, tell him what you told me. Tell him I got juicy prudence over everything. Oh. Don't worry, Andy. They can't do a thing. They can't do a thing to us. They can't do nothing. I told you, Andy, they can't do a thing to us. Not a thing. They can't, huh? Well, we ain't exactly slashing around in the full freedom. <laughs> when they get us on their stand, they're liable to turn you against me and me against you. They'll have us cutting each other's throats. Yeah, you said it. I see that in the picture with Humpty Bogart once. And Andy, what we gotta do is stick together. And don't forget, we is all brothers in that great fraternity, the mystic knights of the sea. We got to be loyal to each other. Face this thing with a united front. All for one and one for all. That's the spirit, Kingfish. Shake. <coughs> this court will come to order. George Stevens and Andrew H. Brown breaking and entering attempted robbery, destroying a public utility. The two defendants were apprehended at the scene of the crime with burglary tools. Violation, Section 498, New York State Criminal Code. How the prisoners approach the bench, please. Your Honor, he's the one what done it. <laughs> Wait a minute, King Fish. Quiet, please. You have heard the charge. Are you represented by counsel? Uh, yes, Your Honor. We got a counsel. Yes, sir. He ought to be here. Where is a counsel for these two men? I right here, Your Honor. <laughs> Your Honor, I'd like to say that they're home. The judge is up there. Oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> Well, I'd like to have the plea of not guilty for these two crooks. That's the stuff. <laughs> On what ground? According to the report, these men were caught trying to break open a telephone coin box in the presence of a witness, who also is a police officer of this city. Well, yes, sir, Your Honor. But they don't learn their lesson. They ain't never gonna break open nothing in front of a cop no more. <laughs> Isn't your name Calhoun? That's right, Your Honor. Al Gunkwin J. Calhoun. 
And didn't I disbar you three years ago? <laughs> so long, boy. Excuse me, Your Honor, but how much ground did we lose while our lawyer was in defending us? We wasted much too much time here. How do you plead? Guilty or not guilty? Not guilty, Your Honor. Uh, yes, sir. Not guilty? Well, uh, slightly guilty. <laughs> In view of the defendant's refusal to enter a plea, I hereby order these two men Your to Honor, be bound over. I'm the arresting officer in this case, and uh, this is Amos Jones, a friend of mine. We have some evidence that has a bearing on this case. Evidence? Uh, yes, yeah, sir, Your Honor. I, I think there's been a mistake made here. Uh, these two fellas wasn't really trying to steal nothing. Uh, uh, you see this here nickel, Your Honor? Yes. In other words, Mr. Jones, these men were trying to recover this 1877 nickel from the corn box. Yes, sir, Your Honor. That's the whole story. Well, Mr. Jones, from what you and the arresting officer have testified, I believe that there was more stupidity involved here than criminal intent. Yes, sir, Your Honor. <laughs> that hit the nail on the head, all right. In view of these facts, I'm going to dismiss this case. But I'm warning you two, you got off easy this time. But if I ever hear of your tampering with a coin box again, <laughs> you'll end up in jail, I'll guarantee you that. Oh, no, sir. Don't worry about that, Your Honor. We has tampered our last tamper. <laughs> it's dismissed. Oh, boy, it sure feels good to get out of here. Yeah, sure do, son. You know, this is one place that ain't never quite seemed like home to me. And to me, the boy. Hey, fellas. fellas. Uh, what do you want, Calhoun? I'm sorry about what happened in the coat there, but if that old judge hadn't thrown me out the court room, I'd have got you fellas off with 90 days. Oh, shut up, Calhoun. <laughs> well, then, you old pal, you still got our round nickel, ain't you? Oh, yeah, I got it right here in my pocket. See, there's a phone right there we can use. Uh, what does we want with a telephone? Well, here's the rare coin dealer telephone number. Call him up and tell him that me and you will be right over to get the $250. Wait a minute, Kingfish. The thing that I has never understood is why has I got to give you half this money? Andy Brown, you made a verbal deal with me and try and back out now and I'll carry you right back in there to that coat again. All right, Kingfish. Oh, me. Kingfish, what's the matter now? I done put the rare coin in the telephone. Do you mean to say that you done put the rare nickel in the telephone? Well, you got me so nervous, I couldn't think. What? You stupid bum. How in the world could you do a thing like that? You heard what the judge said about tapping with the phone boxes. Yeah, but Kingfish... Oh, you... shut up. Andy Brown, as long as I live, I'm never gonna speak to you again. Goodbye, you big dummy. <laughs> What number did you dial, please? El Dorado 06353. I'm sorry, there is no such number. I know it ain't. Uh, would you please return my nickel? <laughs>
think of nothing in front of a cop no more. <laughs> Isn't your name Calhoun? That's right, Your Honor. Al Gunkwin J. Calhoun. And didn't I disbar you three years ago? <laughs> Excuse me, Your Honor, but how much ground did we lose while our lawyer was in defending us? We're wasting much too much time here. How do you plead? Guilty or not guilty? Not guilty, Your Honor. Uh, yes, sir. Not guilty? Well, uh, slightly guilty. In view of the defendant's refusal to enter a plea, I hereby order these two men Your to Honor, be bound over. I'm the arresting officer in this case, and uh, this is Amos Jones, a friend of mine. We have some evidence that has a bearing on this case. Evidence? Uh, yes, yeah, sir, Your Honor. I, I think there's been a mistake made here. Uh, these two fellas wasn't really trying to steal nothing. Uh, uh, you see this here nickel, Your Honor? Yes. In other words, Mr. Jones, these men were trying to recover this 1877 nickel from the corn box. Yes, yeah, sir, Your Honor. That's the whole story. Well, Mr. Jones, from what you and the arresting officer have testified, I believe that there was more stupidity involved here than criminal intent. Yes, sir, you are. That hit the nail on the head, all right. In view of these facts, I'm going to dismiss this case. But I'm warning you two, you got off easy this time. But if I ever hear of your tampering with a corn box again, <laughs> You'll end up in jail, I'll guarantee you that. Oh, no, sir. Don't worry about that, Your Honor. We has tampered our last tamper. <laughs> it's dismissed. Ah. <laughs> oh, boy, it sure feels good to get out of here. Yeah, sure do, sir. You know this is one place that ain't never quite seemed like home to me. And to me, the boy. Hey, fellas. Gonna... fellas. Uh, what do you want, Calhoun? I'm sorry about what happened in the court there, but if that old judge hadn't thrown me out the courtroom, I'd have got you fellas off with 90 days. Oh, shut up, Calhoun. <laughs> well, then, you old pal, you still got our round nickel, ain't you? Oh, yeah, I got it right here in my pocket. See, there's a phone right there we can use. Uh, what does we want with a telephone? Well, here's the rare coin dealer telephone number. Call him up and tell him that me and you will be right over to get the $250. Wait a minute, Kingfish. The thing that I has never understood is why has I got to give you half this money? Andy Brown, you made a for how and a fellow opening his own mail, isn't it? Mr. Andy Brown. Eighteen seventy-seven. Holy mackerel. Andy has got a nickel worth $250. George Stevens, it was bad enough opening Andy's letter. You ain't thinking about jipping him out of that coin, is you? Who, me? Innocent Stevens? <laughs> I'll say I is. Well, you just better not, because I ain't going to stand for no more trouble around here. You understand that? And if you start jipping Andy or anybody else, I'm going to break every bone in your body. <laughs> Kingfish. Uh, have a seat there, Henry. Charming to see you. Simply charming. Yeah, it is charming. I dropped Mrs. Van Porter at the beauty parlor and came right over as soon as I could. Now, uh, what's this I hear about Andy having a nickel worth $250? That's right, Henry. I accidentally found out about it. Now all I gotta do is figure out a way to get it away from him. Well, knowing you, Kingfish, <laughs> That should be a minor operation. I know the boy got the nickel on him someplace, but how I gonna get his pants off so I can go through his pockets? Well, let me see. A man takes his pants off when he uh, goes to sleep, or uh, when he goes to the doctor. Wait a minute. Doctor. That's it, Henry. Doctor. Say, I got a lot of doctor equipment that I got when the drugstore up the street burned down. Yeah, Dr. George Stevens. Henry, 
I think I'd about to free phone a nickelectomy. <laughs> Kingfish, I've been expecting a letter that was supposed to, uh, 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 uh excuse me, Andy, can't you see I'm taking a blood count here? <laughs> see, add four, subtract two. Hmm, that's the most anemic blood I ever did see. <laughs> well, Andy, old pal, it's good seeing you. Uh, excuse the rubber glove, I just come from a big operation. Kingfish. Huh? You mean to say that you is an actual doctor? Well, I ain't been blabbing it around, but I've been taking a correspondence course in doctoring from that big uh, medical school down there in uh, uh, Baltimore, John Vanville. Oh, I didn't hear about that place, yeah. Oh, <laughs> uh, what's the matter? Well, wait a minute, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, I feel a whole lot better after my little nap. Guess I'll get on home and get dressed for the party. Hello, Joe. What are you doing delivering milk here at 5.30 in the evening? What? Why, it's 5.30 in the morning, Jean Fish. Morning? Holy mackerel, I gotta take Sapphire to a dance nine hours ago. Well, I better get in my car and get on home. Well, of all things. What's the matter, Kingfish? I wish I knowed. Last night, I left my car right here in front of the lodge hall. Now it's over across the street. That's a mysterious thing. Well, maybe somebody used it. Well, guess I'll get on home.
Well, of all things. What's the matter, Kingfish? I wish I knowed. Last night, I left my car right here in front of the lodge hall. Now it's over across the street. That's a mysterious thing. Well, maybe somebody used it. Well, guess I'll get on home. involved here than criminal intent. Yes, sir, you are. That hit the nail on the head, all right. In view of these facts, I'm going to dismiss this case. But I'm warning you two, you got off easy this time. But if I ever hear of your tampering with a coin box again, <laughs> you'll end up in jail. I'll guarantee you that. Oh, no, sir. Don't worry about that, Your Honor. We has tampered our last tamper. <laughs> it's dismissed. Ah. <laughs> oh, boy, it sure feels good to get out of here. Yeah, it sure do, sir. You know, this is one place that ain't never quite seemed like home to me. And to me, the boy. Hey, fellas. Seen fellas. Uh, what do you want, Calhoun? I'm sorry about what happened in the coat there, but if that old judge hadn't thrown me out the coat room, I'd have got you fellas off in 90 days. Oh, shut sure. up, yeah. Calhoun. <laughs> well, then. Oh, well, you still got our round nickel, ain't you? Oh, yeah, I got it right here in my pocket. See, there's a phone right there we can use. Uh, what does we want with a telephone? Well, here's the rare coin dealer telephone number. Call him up and tell him that me and you will be right over to get the $250. Wait a minute, Kingfish. The thing that I has never understood is why has I got to give you half this money? Andy Brown, you made a verbal deal with me, and try and back out now, and I'll carry you right back in there to that coat again. All right, Kinky. <laughs> Oh, me. Kingfish, what's the matter now? I done put the rare coin in the telephone. Do you mean to say that you done put the round nickel in the telephone? Well, you got me so nervous, I couldn't think. What? You stupid bum. How in the world could you do a thing like that? You heard what the judge said about tapping with the phone boxes. Yeah, but Kingfish... Oh, you... shut up. Andy Brown, as long as I live, I'm never gonna speak to you again. Goodbye, you big dummy. <laughs> What number did you dial, please? El Dorado 06353. I'm sorry, there is no such number. I know it ain't. Uh, would you please return my nickel? <laughs> Thank 
job you got there. Is that a new one? Oh, no, no. Uh, that's the original paint job come with the car. That's the 1939 model. You mean that's the original paint job? Uh, uh, yeah, that's right. You know, they much did a much better job in those days. Yeah. They really made cars that could stand up. Believe me, you don't find paint jobs like this on the cars they put out today. Look at that. Still smooth. Just as if it was done yesterday. <laughs> well, they use uh, blue giant paint in them days. <laughs> My room. They were looking for a maroon car. With a big white stripe. I think I'll take you boys down to the station house. Oh, you can't do this to me. I'm innocent. You can't put me in jail. I'm innocent, I tell you. I is innocent. I'm innocent, I tell you. I didn't do it. I'm innocent. Mr. Stevens, we're here to determine the true facts in this case. So will you please keep quiet so we can continue? Yes, sir. Mr. Brown, one of the things I can't understand at this point is how you happen to get involved in all this, with the car and everything. Well, Your Honor, I just wanted to help the kingfish here. You mean in connection with the robbery? No, no, Your Honor. He pulled the robbery by himself. <laughs> I don't know nothing about the robbery. That's all for now, Mr. Brown. Yes. Mr. Stevens, according to the arresting officer's report, you claim you were asleep in the lodge hall during the time of the robbery. That's right, Your Honor. Oh, Mrs. Stevens. Yes, Your Honor. Now, Mrs. Stevens, you say that you went to the dance without your husband? That's right, Your Honor. And I telephoned the lodge hall several times during the evening, but I didn't get any answer. Your Honor, I object. Our wife can't testify against her husband. Shut up. Yes, ma'am. On the other hand, Your Honor, Mr. Stevens is quite a sound sleeper, and he could have slept through the telephone ringing. Your Honor, as Mr. Stevens' wife, I, of all people, know that he is not perfect. And I certainly can't excuse his actions in this case. But I can assure you that he is not a thief. Thank you, Mrs. Stevens. Well, there seems to be an additional fact here that might have some bearing on this case. It is commonly known, Stevens, that you have been very desperate for money in recent weeks. Well, uh, I admit I've been a little strapped. Just what is your business, Mr. Stevens? Well, uh, is, uh, well, you might say I is a uh, financial manipulator. A financial manipulator? Fine. I believe that there was more stupidity involved here than criminal intent. Yes, sir, you are. <laughs> that hit the nail on the head, all right. In view of these facts, I'm going to dismiss this case. But I'm warning you two, you got off easy this time. But if I ever hear of your tampering with a coin box again, <laughs> you'll end up in jail. I'll guarantee you that. Oh, no, sir. Don't worry about that, Your Honor. We have tampered our last tamper. <laughs> it's dismissed. Ah. <laughs> oh, boy, it sure feels good to get out of here. Yeah. Sure do, son. You know, this is one place that ain't never quite seemed like home to me. And to me, the boy. Hey, no. Fellas. Uh, what do you want, Calhoun? I'm sorry about what happened in the coat there, but if that old judge hadn't thrown me out the coat room, I'd have got you fellas off with 90 days. Oh, shut up, Calhoun. <laughs> well, then, you old pal, you still got our round nickel, ain't you? Oh, yeah. I got it right here in my pocket. See, there's a phone right there we can use. Uh, what does we want with a telephone? Well, here's the rare coin dealer telephone number. Call him up and tell him that me and you will be right over to get the $250. Wait a minute, Kingfish. The thing that I has never understood is why has I got to give you half this money? Andy Brown, you made a verbal deal with me, and try and back out now, and I'll carry you right back in there to that coat again. All right, Kingfish. <laughs> Oh, me. <laughs> <laughs> 
Kingfish. What's the matter now? I done put the rare coin in the telephone. Do you mean to say that you done put the round nickel in the telephone? Well, you got me so nervous, I couldn't think. What? You stupid bum. How in the world could you do a thing like that? You heard what the judge said about tapping with the phone boxes? Yeah, but Kingfish... Oh, you... shut up. Andy Brown, as long as I live, I'm never gonna speak to you again. Goodbye, you big dummy. <laughs> What number did you dial, please? El Dorado 06353. I'm sorry, there is no such number. I know it ain't. Uh, would you please return my nickel? <laughs> Not guilty, Your Honor. Uh, yes, sir. 
Not guilty? Well, uh, slightly guilty. In view of the defendant's refusal to enter a plea, I hereby order these two men Your to Honor, be bound over. I'm the arresting officer in this case, and uh, this is Amos Jones, a friend of mine. We have some evidence that has a bearing on this case. Evidence? Uh, yes, yeah, sir, Your Honor. I, I think there's been a mistake made here. Uh, these two fellas wasn't really trying to steal nothing. Uh, uh, you see this here nickel, Your Honor? Yes. In other words, Mr. Jones, these men were trying to recover this 1877 nickel from the corn box. Yes, yeah, sir, Your Honor. That's the whole story. Well, Mr. Jones, from what you and the arresting officer have testified, I believe that there was more stupidity involved here than criminal intent. Yes, sir, you are. That hit the nail on the head, all right. In view of these facts, I'm going to dismiss this case. But I'm warning you two, you got off easy this time. But if I ever hear of your tampering with a corn box again, <laughs> You'll end up in jail, I'll guarantee you that. Oh, no, sir. Don't worry about that, Your Honor. We has tampered our last tamper. <laughs> it's dismissed. Ah. <laughs> oh, boy, it sure feels good to get out of here. Yeah, sure do, sir. You know this is one place that ain't never quite seemed like home to me. And to me, the boy. Hey, fellas. Fellas. Uh, what do you want, Calhoun? I'm sorry about what happened in the court there, but if that old judge hadn't thrown me out the courtroom, I'd have got you fellas off with 90 days. Oh, shut up, Calhoun. <laughs> well, Andy, old pal, you still got our round nickel, ain't you? Oh, yeah, I got it right here in my pocket. See, there's a phone right there we can use. Uh, what does we want with a telephone? Well, here's the rare coin dealer telephone number. Call him up. And Kingfish. If he get to waving his finger in front of your face like this, only his finger's gonna be twice as long as mine, he'll have you confessing to everything, from the shooting of Dan McGrew to the killing of Cock Robin. Calhoun, what am I gonna do? Well, now, let me see. The king nab you if they can't find the car. And if I was you, I'd dispose of it. Dispose of it to somebody. Yeah, dispose of it. Calhoun, huh? I think I know the disposal unit I'm gonna use. Mm, yeah. All right, Andy. Now, come here, son. There's something I want to show you here. Wait a minute, Kingfish. I got that message up at my place for me to meet you here. What you want to see me about? Well, now, I'll tell you, Andy, old pal. Hold it, kingfish, hold it. Whatever it is, I don't want to hear it. Why, what's the matter? I don't want to hear nothing that starts out with Andy, old pal. I can't never fold it. Oh, no, no, Andy. I had you come over here because I want to do you a favor. What's that? Well, Andy, this car here of mine that I wanted to sell you last week. Look, kingfish, the answer is still the same. I ain't paying $400 for that junk heat. Now look, Andy. Now look, Andy. Forget the $400 price. I done saved it a little. And if you act right quick, you can have the car for $2. $2? Well, I don't know, King. Look, Andy, would you take the car if I give you $2? Yeah, well, tell you the truth, King, please. I don't need no car like that. Would you take the car if I give you the $400? Oh, King, the thing is beginning to sound silly. <laughs> that car might be all right, but if I was going to... Well, come here, Andy. I'll... Yeah, but, but look, Kingfish, the thing I can't understand is why are you so anxious to get rid of this car all of a sudden? Well, Andy, I can see that you haven't heard about the economic conditions of the country. What do you mean by that? Well, you know, last year in the automobile business, how it went from a seller's market to a buyer's market. Yeah, I hear something about that. Well, yesterday it took a turn for the worse. It's now what they call the giver's market. Yeah, well, Kingfish, I know you're just kidding about the $400. <laughs> uh, but is you serious about wanting to give me this car for nothing? That's right, Andy. I know when I lick, you really got me over the bar. You really sensed the trend of the times, didn't you? I did? 
<laughs> Still trying to play dumb, huh? You just flick me, all right. Well, I'd like to have a plea of not guilty for these two crooks. That's the stuff. <laughs> On what ground? According to the report, these men were caught trying to break open a telephone coin box in the presence of a witness, who also is a police officer of this city. Well, yes, sir, Your Honor. But they don't learn their lesson. They ain't never gonna break open nothing in front of a cop no more. <laughs> Isn't your name Calhoun? That's right, Your Honor. Al Gunkwin J. Calhoun. And didn't I disbar you three years ago? <laughs> so long, boy. Excuse me, Your Honor, but how much ground did we lose while our lawyer was in defending us? We're wasting much too much time here. How do you plead? Guilty or not guilty? Not guilty, Your Honor. Uh, yes, sir. Not guilty? Well, uh, slightly guilty. <laughs> In view of the defendant's refusal to enter a plea, I hereby order these two men Your to Honor, be bound over. I'm the arresting officer in this case, and uh, this is Amos Jones, a friend of mine. We have some evidence that has a bearing on this case. Evidence? Uh, yes, yeah, sir, Your Honor. I, I think there's been a mistake made here. Uh, these two fellas wasn't really trying to steal nothing. Uh, uh, you see this here nickel, Your Honor? Yes. In other words, Mr. Jones, these men were trying to recover this 1877 nickel from the corn box. Yes, yeah, sir, Your Honor. That's the whole story. Well, Mr. Jones, from what you and the arresting officer have testified, I believe that there was more stupidity involved here than criminal intent. Yes, yeah, sir, Your Honor. That hit the nail on the head, all right. In view of these facts, I'm going to dismiss this case. But I'm warning you two, you got off easy this time. But if I ever hear of your tampering with a coin box again, <laughs> you'll end up in jail, I'll guarantee you that. Oh, no, sir. Don't worry about that, Your Honor. We has tampered our last tamper. <laughs> it's dismissed. Oh, boy, it sure feels good to get out of here. Yeah, sure do, son. You know, this is one place that ain't never quite seemed like home to me. And to me, the boy. Hey, fellas. Like... fellas. Uh, what do you want, Calhoun? I'm sorry about what happened in the court there, but if that old judge hadn't thrown me out the court, we'd have got you fellas off in 90 days. Oh, shut up, Calhoun. <laughs> well, then, you old pal, you still got our round nickel, ain't you? Oh, yeah, I got it right here. Don't want you to see nothing. <laughs> nothing, I don't know. Uh, oh, not there, Andy, not there. Here's the chair over here. Now, you sit right here. On, sit down there on the chair now. Just sit, just sit down. Yeah, yeah. Everything's gonna be all right now. Just... Uh, can you see anything? I can't see nothing. Fine. Say, Kingfish, where is you? I was scared. Now, 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 wait a minute. Now, sit down, will you, Andy? Sit down. Now, sit down there now. Now, just sit there and relax. Everything's gonna be all right. Kingfish, hold my hand. Hold your hand? Yeah, hold my hand. If you don't hold my hand this second, I'm gonna take this bandage right off. No, no, don't, 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 don't do that. Don't, I don't do that. Uh, here on my hand, now just hang right on to it there. Hang right on to it. <laughs> ah, that's better. Mmm. <laughs> your arm sure is cold. Uh, that's because I've been having chills here lately. Kingfish, I know you is here. But it sounds like your voice is coming to the other side of the room. It just sounds like that way, Andy. The acoustic. I stand right here alongside you. Oh, good boy. Good boy. <laughs> you know, Kingfish, you was a real pal to stay so close to me when I was scared like this. <laughs> yeah, you sure is. Mr. Wheel your telephone. Right back there. I uh, thank you. <laughs> well, hello, Mr. 
Mr. Wilton. Look, I got that letter about the 1877 nickel. Yeah. And I got the nickel right here in my pocket. And, uh... <laughs> Holy smoke! I done dropped a rare nickel in the telephone. Say, Kingfish, for the last half hour, you've been awful quiet. You ain't dead, is you? You. Andy, what is you doing with that crazy thing in your hand? <laughs> Amos, 30 minutes ago, the kingfish was on the other end of that thing. Yeah? Well, what is your pants doing down on the